Well, YouTube, LinkedIn, or whatever social media platform you found this video on, I recently turned 34 years old this past month. So I am, without a doubt, in my mid-30s right now. Let's talk about the five big lessons I have learned that applies to both on and off the tennis court. Let's start with a more general topic. You might see these amazing winners and plays on ESPN, TikTok, YouTube, whatever social media platform that you see these world-class tennis players going for ridiculous low chance winners. Yes, they might look cool, but you have to understand that in overwhelmingly 75% of men's and women's singles tennis matches, the winner of the tennis match is the individual that makes the lesser amount of errors. I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate your big winners and milestones. In fact, I'm saying you should. Take a well-earned extra day of random PTO after you hit your business milestone or after you get promoted. But what I'm more directly saying is that the individual that is more focused on grinding out the points and making the best informed decision at the time will probably come out on top. On the tennis court, that might include going for a cross-court ground stroke instead of going down the line when you were behind the baseline. Or maybe putting some extra margin on your shots on a windy day outdoors. And on the personal side of things, don't do stupid stuff like drunk driving. Just call an Uber. Don't drop out of high school. I'll talk about college in a bit. And don't get stuck in a relationship, whether professional or personal, to someone that just won't help you grow as an individual. A majority of success is not the fantastic wins you have. It's about avoiding the errors that are within our control every single day. I was talking to a dear friend of mine a year ago and we discussed the terms of simple and easy. Shout out to Ashley, by the way. In most cases, in spoken or written dialogue, the terms simple and easy are conflated frequently, actually. Although the definitions, at least as Americans speak it, might be interchangeable in any dialogue as an adjective. There is a great nuance to that I want to discuss right now. Remember when you were a kid and you had a big band-aid on your knee because you had a boo-boo on the playground? Do you remember how terrified you were about the prospect about taking that band-aid off? You peel off a small bit at a time from the band-aid and it's the most pain you've ever felt as a child. Then your parent walks into the bathroom and tells you just to peel it off quickly. The concept is absolutely simple, but as a child, it's not easy, at least not yet. Well, the same can be said on the tennis court with phrases just like, hit the ball to the backhand, or just get your first serve in, or don't play a pickleball. And outside of the tennis court, something that is simple but far from easy are concepts like asking your boss for a raise, finding another full-time job in your field after a contract tense, or cutting off toxic people from your life. And in the end, these concepts are simple, but again, far from easy in terms of execution. This third one I personally love because there are many examples of this in my field. I know some parents don't want you to hear this, but for the most part, you actually don't need a college degree in what you want to do as a career. For the most part, let me explain. There are some people out there that take this into another step and say that you don't need a college degree at all, but I'm not here to make that argument. My contention with the old school way of thinking is that you don't need a degree like a professional tennis management from a college or a certificate like a PTR to be a good tennis coach. Yes, a good amount of the traditional coaches that are full-time do have at least one of those certificates, if not the degree itself. But if you really ask them truthfully in a private setting, an overwhelming majority of them will say that it's just a marketing label. It doesn't actually help you to become a better tennis coach. You know what helps you become a better tennis coach? Coaching with passion, having good communication skills, being a good business person, and always learning even when you're not teaching on the tennis court. And in my case, I graduated with a business finance degree, and I went to sales for about three years before turning 26. But I was curious enough to know what some of my coworkers did at a specific software company, and I was absolutely intrigued and obsessed and I obsessed myself with learning how to code, knowing what an object was in terms of coding and seeing if I could make a crappy program actually take user input with some, without some sort of runtime or catastrophic error. Was it the hardest 12 months of my life teaching basic concepts of computer science to myself? Absolutely. But now, as a seven-year professional software engineer, albeit looking for my next job as of the publishing of this video, I would not have it any other way. I'm not saying that you should start teaching tennis at local park even if you've never played tennis before. That goes to say you shouldn't be attempting to fly airplanes or perform open heart surgeries unless you have an actual background in it. 
but in an overwhelming amount of skills, you can teach yourself with a beautiful amount of information, both good and bad, online. And in order to run a successful YouTube channel by myself, I had to learn photography, scripting, camera lenses, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, lighting, and keep in mind all of these are valuable skills I learned on the fly without taking a single class. With all these skills, you can actually learn out of necessity, you can eventually learn how to start your own business. Yes. This might be a very, very scary prospect for some people out here, but if you start your own business, you are forced to learn things at a breakneck speed. Topics such as sales, customer service, accounting, networking, taxes, and business write-offs. Some people, a select few, are meant to be full-time business owners. But I would argue that running a full-time business is not for everyone. But running a part-time business, whether it is teaching tennis, selling art, doing photography, website design, it does have some negatives, but there are so many positives on the other side. Having a side income has saved me so many times in some of the darker parts of my life, but it has also helped me in positive parts of my life as well, specifically being able to afford new tennis stuff, taking vacations, and also that sweet, sweet tax return, especially in the early parts of my business lifespan. But the greatest benefit of starting your own business is literally you. As wonderful and selfless as you can be, you have to understand you, yes you, are the most important person to look after. Investing in your own personal growth, skill set, mental toughness, physical toughness, and emotional well-being is very underrated at this day and age. Yes, I think you do have a duty to serve your local and worldwide community. That is why it is important to be the best version of yourself as you can possibly be to make an impact for those around you near and far. It is now more important than ever since social media and interconnectivity has gotten us closer to one another. And also, if you think about it, we're disconnected at the same time. If you cannot take care of yourself, how can you take care of those that you love most? Everyone, that's right. Everyone needs to take time to rest, whether that's not working out or practicing because of a lingering ailment or just taking a few weeks off between contract jobs to straighten stuff out in your personal life, like yours truly. Well, let me know what you guys think about the five major lessons I've learned being in my mid thirties. Did I miss any major ones that relate to sports, business, and personal stuff? Leave a comment down in the section below. And if you are a tennis player, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for amateur tennis match play and string reviews. And hey, if you made it this far, why don't you hit that like button? It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if there are any people in your circle, personal and professional, that is in their twenties or early thirties, do send them this video. It'll help them and it'll also help me. And as always, happy hitting.